Hello. In this video, we're going to take a Unity project and set it up as a Git repository uh, and then get it onto GitHub. And then we're going to delete all that locally and pretend we're someone else. And we're going to download and connect to somebody else's Git project. Uh, so I have an empty Unity project set up and I need to initialize it as a Git repository. So if you find the project, I called it Git empty test. Sure. What a project. Uh, we can see that when we when we uh, make an, even though it's an empty Unity project, we already still have a lot of assets here to begin with. Um, so let's initialize this base root Unity folder where our assets and everything is as a new project. Um, so I found that just by right clicking in my project window and doing show and explore, which will either open this folder or open one of the subfolders and you can find it from there. Uh, next, we're going to run git init on it. I'm going to do this visually using the tool fork. Um, I'm going to go initialize a new repository. Uh, and let's grab this path. If I click up here, I can just hit, hit copy and I can paste it. Whoops. Uh, and get to that folder, git empty test. We'll select it. Uh, and when I do, I've created this dot git folder inside of the Unity project. Great. Um, the current state is not so good yet. I'm on a detached head state because I don't have a single commit yet. So it doesn't know what the, the head or the most recent commit, the, the current, you know, the current state is because there, there aren't any. Uh, there are no branches, there are no commits, there's no nothing. Even more bad concerning is that the library folder is included in our project. So we want to ignore that. To ignore it, to tell Git to ignore a set of uh, folders, we use a special file called a dot git ignore file. Um, I'm going to show you how to make it yourself, but um, after this, I'm going to show you where to get a pretty good existing one for Unity. Um, so you wouldn't follow these steps here. Um, Unity will, in any directory, uh, look at a folder, a file that is called dot git ignore, and it will uh, treat that relative to the uh, current location. Um, so this git ignore is in the root directory, but you could have another git ignore inside of your assets. You could have another one inside of your packages. You could have as many as, as you want uh, in, in different folders, and they're all sort of relative, uh, relative paths. So this is in the root directory, which means in this same uh, path is the libra library, uh, the library directory. Um, so if I add that to git ignore, my number of changes uh, are 219 now. If I undo that and hit save and that refreshes, now there are 22,000. Uh, so I want to ignore the library folder and everything in it. I want to ignore the temp folder and everything in it. I want to ignore uh, logs. I want to ignore any .vs code or .idea. Uh, those are JetBrains Rider or VS Code working directories. Sometimes you don't want to ignore those, depends. Um, and just have my assets folder, my packages, and my settings. That's usually all we want. Um, but I have to, having to remember that every time is kind of a pain. So I'm going to show you a different way to get that. Uh, and the way we're going to do it, GitHub Unity Git Ignore. Uh, Unity, uh, well, GitHub uh, has this slash Git Ignore repository where they just keep presets uh, of like 8 million <laughs> gitignore, a collection of gitignore templates. Uh, and one of theirs is Unity. Uh, and as you can see, it ignores the library folder, uh, whether or not it's capitalized. It also ignores builds folders. We always make builds and we always put them into a builds folder. Uh, so having this already ignored is good. You don't want to put your builds in your, in your commits, um, like JetBrains Rider plugins, bunch of auto-generated stuff, uh, you know. Uh, we want to use meta files, but sometimes we don't. Um, uh, anyway, so this is a pretty good folder. So I'm going to click on the raw button here. Once I found it to get this, I'm going to hit Control S, uh, and then I will go back to that folder, Unity, get empty test. Uh, and I will call name this as dot git ignore. Um, and then we will double check that it named itself correctly. It didn't. It named itself as git ignore with no file extension. We want it to be dot git ignore. So I'll rename that. Um, 
Windows doesn't want you to change file mate paths, file extensions, which is reasonable. Um, so anyway, now we're down to, look at that, only 28 commits, uh, sorry, 28 changes, which makes sense now that I'm at an empty project. Uh, so let's stage all of those. And now that they are staged, I will uh, give it an initial empty commit. You, you could be at any stage in your project. You don't have to be at an empty project. You don't need to use git from the beginning. Um, so I'll commit that. It made a branch by default. It called it master. Uh, common convention is for the defaults to now be called main instead of master, so we'll switch that. Uh, and now we need to push it to our remote. Oh no, we don't have a remote. We have no GitHub uh, place for this to go. So let's make that next. On GitHub, I'm logged into my account. I'm gonna go to my repositories and click the new button for a new repository. Um, I'm gonna make mine private and call it git temp testing. I'm gonna delete this. I give yours a better name and a description um, and probably make yours public, but I'm about to delete this once I'm done recording the video, so here we are. Next, you, you might think that you want to do things this way. You do not. You absolutely do not. Uh, why not? This will make a separate uh, sort of main head git history, like an initial uh, commit. And we already have a project with initial commit because Unity isn't an empty project. Uh, we would do this if we were initializing an empty project and then cloning that not empty anymore with these files project down and, and working with that. Uh, but we already have one. So we don't wanna add any of this stuff yet. Um, so we're not gonna touch any of that. Um, and we will know we've done that successfully. Oh no, I didn't do it successfully. <laughs> I didn't undo the, the I, I didn't undo the, uh, to do that. Uh, well, let's just delete this uh, repository and try again. Yes, yeah, oh my God. Oh my God. Yes, I deleted it. Okay, new project. Git testing temp. Oh, I named it something else this time. We'll make it private. We won't press any of these buttons and we'll make it. And we'll have known we've done this successfully when it shows us this little quick setup uh, text when it's asking us how do we want to initialize it. Um, all I'm gonna do is copy this URL that it gives us and then head back to fork. Uh, and then I'm going to add a new remote by right-clicking on the word remotes, add new remote. Uh, if you're using a command line, if you're using a different software, just search how do I add a remote with that tool. Um, I'm gonna call, I'll call it origin, URL, yep, fine, test, am I authorized? Do I have permission to push to there? Do I have my account set up with Git correctly? Um, I do, if you don't have that set up, uh, and if you're using Fork, you can go to file accounts and you can add your GitHub account that way or you can set up your GitHub account through your install of Git. It's, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. Uh, th that's not the subject of this video. Um, but if you're having issues with that, perhaps the first thing you would try would be logging into GitHub uh, via this, the fork UI, or the source tree UI, or set up um, terminal credential helper, GitHub credential helpers, something like that, uh, which is what I did before. Anyway. So now I have a branch main locally, and on the remote origin, I don't have a remote branch. Uh, we could add a remote branch and then track them together, but there's an even easier way, which is if I hit push, yup, it's gonna do that for me. It's gonna make a new branch with the same name and it's gonna track them together. So on the terminal, this is two commands here in fork, I can just do the one and it will do it for me. So now there is a local branch main, there is a remote branch main, I can refresh here, I'm up to date, and my project is now in, in Git. Uh, so I can work, I can make a new sprite, and I don't know. Yeah, it's a smiley face, whatever. Uh, I've made some changes, and now it's time to commit those changes and push them. So I changed the scene, and apparently I seems to have changed some project settings and scene template settings. Um, I think this is just because I 
happen to, to actually click into the editor for the first time, uh, I'll add those too. If you find yourself sort of constantly changing things, oh, I'm on um, Android build target. Give me some icons. Sure. Uh, I've opened the project on, a, on this build. Eh, let's commit it. Um, if you find yourself constantly sort of fighting another user with your, your commits, that's when you want to investigate. Um, when you have some new auto-generated file that doesn't matter and you just threw it in there, fine. All right, added smile to sample scene. A little description there, commit, push, upload, and then somebody, did anyone else make any changes? Oh, they did, we'll pull them down. Great, um, so now we're done as the person who set up the project. The next step are the configuration steps where you would go to your repo, go to your settings, go to your collaborators, and you would invite the GitHub accounts of your team members to the one single remote repository that you will all share, um, and perhaps me if it's for the class, uh, and it will be public, um, and then they can make changes. Other people can see it, but they can't make changes. Um, so. Now I'm going to, I'll delete this off camera. Now I'm going to show you what this would look like if you were grabbing someone else's project. Um, I already have this one, so let's use a different one. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let me find the last time I touched a Unity project. That one's already on my computer. Uh, that's a package. Is that a package or a project? That's a package. Oh my gosh. Is that a package or a project? That's a package. There we go. Okay, we'll use this one. Um, <laughs> sorry, I didn't have one ready. Uh, so uh, to clone it, uh, what we're going to do is we do this from Git. We don't make a new empty Unity project. Uh, first, we clone it from Git to get all the files first. Um, so from fork, we'll do file clone. It already found it on my clipboard. Uh, parent folder as I'm going to put all my Unity projects in the s slash Unity folder um, and I will give it that name and I will clone it like that. Um, or uh, on the command line, I could go to that folder, double check I'm in the right place. I already have this one here. Well, <laughs> and then I would type git clone and then that uh, file name, uh, that URL, and it would clone it into that folder. So let's just delete that project. Um, and nope, it doesn't exist. Uh, so we would type git clone, paste that in. Uh, really, we want to paste the .git URL, the one that ends with .git. But um, git is smart enough that if you give it a GitHub address, it should resolve that for you. There it goes. It just downloaded that. Uh, refresh, and there it is. Um, great. How do I open it? In Unity Hub, we instead of clicking on New Project, we already have one. Uh, we click the Add button, and we just find the root folder, the one with the assets folder, and click Open. It gives me a warning that I don't have the same editor version installed. Would I like to install that version? Now nah, I'll, I'll bump it from 0.18 to 0.36. Uh, oh, nope, that's not the one I want. I'll bump it from 0.18 to 0.34. Yeah, I don't want to install a new one. Change version, that's one pop-up. Wait, two pop-ups. There it is. The hub warned me and Unity the editor warned me because you generally just shouldn't do that. Uh, anyway, so now I am launching that project. What is this project? Dice roller. Yeah. And hey, look, it all works. And uh, I should be able to 20d6. Yeah, roll some dice. Um, 70. Is that good? I don't know. Whatever. Great. Uh, so that is basically it. If I was working with others, I would make sure I grab their one single remote repository. You're only going to have one GitHub repo, but everybody will keep a full local copy of the project. Um, and that's that's basically that. That's how you set up Git and Unity. Uh, the things you want to check on are that you don't have your library folder in your Git history. Just start over. <laughs> I mean, just start over. 
uh, and that you do include meta files. Uh, and check out my video, what are meta files, for a refresher on those. I will link it. Okay, that is that. I think I covered most of the basics. Uh, the guidebook has a page that tells you how to um, set up um, the um, collaborators features. Um, and there's even on the using GitHub desktop, if you're using this software, which I don't recommend, I think it, I think it masks some of the underlying um, vocab a bit too much, but um, it's, it's fine, it's okay, it works. Um, this will show you uh, uh, how to add collaborators and all the, all the steps there. So check those resources out. Here is a quick review page. I'll link that below, uh, which gives you the step-by-step -step that this video basically also was. All right, have a good one.